I was playing soccer in Duke. I'm taking a sports psychology class and that taught us that sports are over 70% mental, which I thought was insane because if sports were over 70% mental, then why had nobody taught us how to train mentally? I had this transformational experience in a very short period of time, about two and a half months, I went from being the last pick on the team to finishing second in points on that team. It created somewhat of an existential crisis for me. Moved across the country into a homeless shelter. I lived and served for seven months. From there, I moved to the closet of a gym for nine months. And in that next 10 years, I would go on to create the first mental training apps in the world, write what's widely considered to be the go-to book in sports psychology, chop wood, carry water. And then about six, seven years ago, I decided I was going to semi-retire. Started playing a lot of golf. My golf game started to get significantly better. And so I went from being around a 15 vanity handicap to winning the club championship at San Diego Country Club in my first ever individual golf tournament. Golf, nobody can hit the shot for you. You can either quit or get it in the hole. That's why I believe that real golf is an x-ray to the soul. If you wanna find out who you are, go play real golf. I'm super excited about today going to get to pick up somebody that's, you know, somewhat of a hero to me, the short game chef, Parker McLaughlin. Joshua. Hi, man. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. Super excited for today. Me too, buddy. Hey, Lexus, take us to Whisper Rock. Calculating route to Whisper Rock Golf Club. I decided to dive a little deeper into your world. Read your books. Uh, my wife has read your books. Like, we, we love your stuff. The tour event that I won, I had the most amount of confidence that I had ever had hitting a golf ball. And I'm leading by six strokes going into the last round. But the last few holes on Saturday, all of a sudden, I, I wasn't hitting it quite as crisp. And I felt like my tempo, my timing, all of a sudden went, went off a little bit. It was one of those moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, my confidence went from sky high to then I feel like I can't break 80 right now. So many people are obsessed with confidence, but as you just talked about, golf is so fickle that you could wake up feeling confident, then all of a sudden you hit a terrible shot and the feelings are gone. Yep. And so instead of chasing confidence, I believe that we want to be pursuing conviction. And I think that conviction only comes from having put yourself in tough situations over and over and over again. It's really fun to be able to play around with club face positioning, shaft positioning, feet positioning, distance away from the golf ball. Let's hit a low shot. Back of the stance, so club face is pretty square, shaft is leaning forward, back of the stance, and this thing's gonna come out nice and low. Beautiful. So let's neutralize that shaft a little bit. There you go. And then now, if we're gonna go the high saucy one. Nice, man. One of my favorite drills is this 30 minute drill. You can only hit 10 balls in 30 minutes. People are looking at what you're doing, and you can only hit one ball in three minutes and then you just have to sit there and wait for three minutes, it becomes very uncomfortable. The first thing you wanna do when you hit a bad shot is you wanna pull a ball in and hit another one, but you don't get to do that on the golf course. I really try and focus and it is frustrating, annoying and borderline ridiculous at times, changing clubs every single time. But that random practice is uncomfortable, it's frustrating, but it actually translates onto the golf course. And so are you practicing to feel better or are you practicing to get better? And a lot of times when I practice, I don't feel like I'm getting better because it doesn't feel good. But I know that it shows up when I need it because that's the type of training that we've done. If you're trying to get better, it's random practice. It mm. needs to be uncomfortable. It needs to replicate what's going on out there. The 
would always feel like, man, golf is so hard. I, I don't know if this really translates in that way. But then after getting to see it in my own life, it made me realize how powerful this stuff is and why I've spent and dedicated a significant portion of my life to getting it out there to as many people as possible. This game is just so different. It's so challenging. It's so hard. It really gave me a whole different respect for it because there's nothing like it that will show you who you are, not who you think you are, not who people say you are, not what you say about yourself. Real golf will show you who you are because it's a true x-ray to the soul and there's really no other game that I've ever encountered that does that like golf.